SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. On this episode of African Dream, we visit one of the youngest sands Nigeria has ever produced. And now, even in his early 50s, he continues to push boundaries. He comes from a glamorous legal background, father a lawyer, and mother a daughter of an aristocrat. A keen explorer, his home expresses his love for adventure, culture, and distant travels. He's quite a family man, married with two daughters, a self-confessed novice when it comes to social media, however trendy enough to take selfies, a hobby he picked up from his teenage daughters. His love for water as a therapeutic regime is evident in his lifestyle. So whose house are we in? Hello, my name is Demala Akinrele and this is my African dream. Thank you very much for welcoming us into your home, into your beautiful house. Thank you very much. You were one of the youngest sands in Nigeria when you became a sand. So tell us about that achievement and how you felt about it at the time. I wasn't aware of um, the fact that I could possibly have become a sand early because the average age of being a sand was in the 50s then. I was just working hard and enjoying my law practice. And I remember appearing before a judge, his name was Ayola, and there was another judge called Onolaja, the two of them. And I had a case where the case was against me and I had to tell the judges that even though it was my case, I'd seen a, a legal decision of one of the courts that was against my case. And they were so impressed with the fact that I could make such a concession. And they called me into chambers and said, you know, I think you should apply for silk, which is what you call the sand. And I said, oh, I haven't thought about it. I thought it was a preserve of later on. And he says, no, you should go for it. We like your advocacy and we like your comportment. And then I applied because you have to apply for it. And then two years after I got it, you know, when you're young, it's the best time to take silk. I mean, I'm 50 now, which is still relatively young. But at the age of 38, it was a heady period. I was very full of energy, the audacity of youth, boundless energy, very low tolerance for risk. And you felt you could do anything. I felt I could conquer the world. So it was a beautiful period. So the newspapers had Silk at 38, you know, the back of this day, and, you know, and it was very, very memorable. I felt, um, I felt I was charmed. <laughs> You've been described as a forceful and persuasive advocate. Would you say that's a good description? Yes, um, I'm an actor when I'm in court. The rule of a lawyer is the rule of an actor. You've been paid to persuade and to convince. And in my own mode of expression, I find passion to be a very important technique that you must convince the judge like a human being and you must express yourself with great conviction very fully. And when you do that, you do that with great force. But again, I'm, that's not my character normally, but I find that in the realm of courts, yes, I, I come across in a very forceful manner. Okay, so going back to your achievements, so um, listed as being the Commodore of Lagos Boat Club since two, well, 2003 to 2004, director of um, Ajip, yeah. okay, as well as director of Orlando. Yes. So the list is endless. I think in terms of the directorships, they came because of my legal profession. I acted for them in a major dispute with um, um, Otumbo Ojora, who is the chairman of Ajip, mm -hmm. and where Orlando were going to take over. While it's in Obomo February, we're going to take over Orlando. Uh, we're going to take over Ajip. It bought the majority interest of the Italians in Ajip. And there was a big legal tussle um, between the existing shareholders and the Nigerian chairman. And I acted as their barrister in court and we succeeded and they brought me onto the board because they found the confidence as a result of my legal expertise. So that's the reason why I was, I was on the board of those companies. I'm not really a businessman, I'm a, a lawyer, thick and through, but uh, you, you tend to get into business is in terms of boards when people have confidence in your, your legal ability, at least within the legal side of things. The boat club, uh, that's my passion. Um, I have a boat, which I, I've, always, I've always had a boat, changed them 10, 10, 15 years after I changed it from time to time. And I think the boat club, I've always gone there as a kid and the opportunity came and uh, I took it up. Normally you spend two years even as a commodore, but I did it one year and I left after I done, I achieved what I wanted for the club. And it made me realize that if you really go to work in any place, in any endeavor, in public service, you don't want to stay. If you work hard, you really want to retire as early as possible. So I'd achieve what I wanted. I said, let the next man do the next thing. It's one thing to be born into wealth. And of course, it's another thing to start from scratch. What is the case 
to you? What is your own personal story? Well, I think mine is peculiar. Um, my father never showed his wealth. So he never made us feel there was any extra money and there was this strong discipline and focus to work hard. In fact, I was afraid to fail. And I think that really spurred me. And I remember once when I was in England and I had gotten into university, I got good grades and a lot of my friends had cars. And I just asked him whether he could buy a car for me, which was a very, it took me a lot of guts to ask him because I wasn't even sure how much he could afford. And I wrote him a letter and I said, I know you would say you didn't drive a car in your days, but things have changed. And he wrote me back a letter and he said, yes, he agrees with me that things have changed, but certain fundamental things have never changed. Concentration, focus, deferred gratification. Go and read your books and a time will come when you can buy all the cars of the world and you won't buy it. And that captures his philosophy. So there was capacity, but it wasn't shown. And I think that's the real issue, which when you're bringing up a child, you must not let them see your own ability to express yourself financially, because it might be fine for you, but you could mess them up. So I had all the advantages of that discipline, despite the fact that you had capacity. So it made me focused. You were called to the Nigerian Bar in 1983? Yes and you subsequently obtained a master's degree at Cambridge University, yeah. is that correct? So you studied abroad, yes. what made you come back home? I think it was clear to me that when you study abroad, um, if you're Nigerian, particularly that generation of the 80s, you had to come back home. Um, the opportunities were here. I, I had no illusion. I saw abroad as just getting the best of the English education, come back with those skills and you make the best of your country and you give the profession its very best. So it was not even an issue for me. I had my uncle Chief Rotimi Williams in the profession, my father in the profession, so there were enough role models here to to open up my space. So there was really no point um, even training abroad at the time. So it was one of the best decisions I took, coming home in 1984 and starting practice. How do you combine the two, so your work life and your family life? I get to work at about midday. So I have all morning with my family wow, okay. and I leave the office at six and I get onto the boat and I sail to Banana Island or to Lekki okay. Monday to Friday, except Thursday when my boatman is off. So I, I think with age now and time, having been in practice for so long mm -hmm. and being able to delegate more, I'm able to, um, to have more private time. And, um, so, and I think you need to enjoy yourself. If you work hard, and you keep on trying to make money all the time, you might find you use the money to pay medical bills. How do you balance consumption and investment? I think um, when I started working and I started earning reasonable money, I just kept on saving probably 70% of what I earned and I spent 30%. But then I was a bachelor, so it was easy to do that. When you're married, it's more difficult because of expenses, but you must at least always have 30% of your, of your income saved. And the reason being that you have to consider the fact that one day those um, earnings would, may stop or be interrupted and you must make plans to create an alternative um, investment. So for me, because I was a bachelor until about 36, I had, and I wasn't excited about going around the world, so I actually was able to save up to about 70% because I had in my mind the idea that I wanted to build a development which would constitute a source of future income for me. So I just deferred my gratification. And the most important thing is appreciating assets. You must always have, put your money into an asset that's appreciating, then you can get the depreciation assets. The depreciation assets are the cars, traveling around the world, staying in hotels, buying boats, but they all depreciate. They're not going to give you any, any sucker in the future. And, but if you have put your money in the appreciating asset, then they would pay for those depreciating assets. So go save a lot, of, save as much money as you can, subject to your expenses that you ne necessarily have to incur in life. I mean, you have to pay rent and you have to pay um, school fees, you have to pay those things. But when you take those aside, delay other or, or avoid other gratifications because you're going to be less attractive in earning as you get older. Just even your, your ability to earn diminishes with age and energy. This is the best time to enjoy it when you're at this age, but if you'll try to enjoy it in your 20s, 30s, then at 50, you'd be very miserable if you didn't have, if you didn't have the cash. Unless you happen to be good luck's friend, you just walk into Asso Rock and you get a contract anytime you flick your fingers, but then that's luck an exception. <laughs> so tell me, what do you like to do in your spare time? 
swimming, swam for 23 years, keeps me fit and alert, and um, sailing and cruising, going on cruises. Nice. I find um, all marine related really um, gives me the pleasure. So those are my elements. And how are you with um, technology or like Terrible. Modern, really? <laughs> I'm a totally illiterate. In fact, I used to have a 10,000 Nokia phone for a long time until my kids were going abroad a year ago and I said, Daddy, you'll be able to be communicating with us. <laughs> so they upgraded me to a Blackberry, which okay. is now behind. Apparently that's yeah. an iPhone and I'm still behind, but at least a Blackberry I've achieved a lot. But I shouldn't ask you about social media or Twitter uh, I'm or I'm terrible. Tweet. I don't even know what it means. <laughs> my, my daughter was telling me about someone being on Twitter. I said, yeah. is, is it a bird? That's sort of <laughs> a flute of a bird or a bird whiny? So I'm one of those. Okay. You know. What about a selfie? Do you know what a selfie is? Oh, yeah, the selfie? pictures, yeah. I've had yeah. to take with them. So I, I've acquired the selfie. Um, you've acquired the selfie. You've actually taken cab. selfies. Oh, yes. I've taken Fantastic. selfies, yeah. So I, I'm starting. Okay, so you're getting I'm there. starting, yeah. It's a long road, but I, I, I'll get there. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, can we see your boats? Yes, you can. I'm loving your boat. It's oh. absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, very much. you for giving us the experience of um, seeing what it's like. It's a pleasure. It's a Honestly, real pleasure. It's amazing. So, okay, tell me how you got the boat. Yes, 15 years ago, watching um, Bond movie World is Never Enough. Saw Halle Berry dive in from a cliff yeah. in a lovely bikini and she swims into a boat which is very similar to this. I think it was a predecessor of this boat. Okay. And I was so charmed by it and the boat sort of, she jumped on it and the boat sort of sped off. Yeah. And my friend and I looked in awe and said, wow, we'd love to own this boat. But of course, we couldn't afford it and it was just a dream. Uh -huh. And five years ago, my friend called me that I'm at a boat show and I think I've seen the predecessor of this boat. It was using a film called Quantum of Solace. So I grabbed the film, watched the DVD, and I saw a James Bond fight on the boat yeah. where they yanked off this arch, wasn't on that boat. And this whole place was clear, it was all open, and the fight was in between here and there. Okay. And I was so caught by the imagination, I said, I needed to buy this boat. Mm. And that was exactly how the boat occurred. You bought it. That's amazing. Yes. So you're obviously a fan of James Bond. Oh yes, I'm a fan of James Bond, yes. Okay. Yeah. Which, um, which one is your favourite Bond? Who's, who's your favourite Bond? Sean Connery. Ah, yes, I think he's, he's, he's the most smooth. Craig is a bit too aggressive and too tedious. Yeah, and um, Sean Connery is the Bond man. And Roger Moore is a bit too much of an Englishman. I think Sean Connery, <laughs> that sort of Scottish air makes him more yeah, real. Yeah, very charming, so, very yeah. Lovely. I like it, yes. So how often are you out on, on the boat? Every evening, except for Thursdays, okay. Monday to Friday. I'm a weekday boater because yeah. it's very easy during the week. Look at how quiet it is. Yeah. I come out here with a friend at 6, 6.30, have a beer, talk about everything, and we even fall asleep talking to each other. And you, oh, you come back and you're ready for dinner and ready to go home. And all the stresses of um, the city just fades, fades away. away. So I do it every evening, different sets of friends, give it a variety. And sometimes yeah. I go to Banana Island, this okay. is Taco Bay on the mouth of the sea where you're going out, but yeah. Banana Island, to Lekki, and sometimes I go to one of the islands on the way to Badagri, but I have a bit of, a bit of time, because yeah. you have a long stretch, and very relaxing. It's perfect, so, it's yeah. beautiful. I can imagine being on the boat um, at night time, you know, drive it. It seems it seems like it would be very romantic. It's the best time, honestly. Do you off, do you bring I your do wife night, yeah. onto I, the boat? Yes, yes, as well. my wife comes. In oh. fact, Friday, last Friday, yeah. we had a saxophonist on the boat, oh. and we had about six of her friends, and we were all singing and dancing, singing all the old love songs, oh. and it was beautiful. The lighting of the boat was on, and Lagos at night, as you can imagine, on the water, it could be anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. And the saxophonist sat on top of the boat, and it was blowing as we're coming into the boat club, and everybody was enthralled. Yeah. And charm. So yeah. So I guess the boat is also another way, one of the ways in which you can keep the romance alive. In terms oh, of, oh yes. If you notice the the cabin is a very romantic uh, cabin. I, I, I a, did see it's that. A, it's yes. a one bedroom suite. There is. A, it's really for man and wife, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. We have a convertible chair if the kids are there, so we can convert. But the, the bed has curtains. You close it up, and it's very similar to the James Bond movie. And James Bond ends the movie and his um, operation has been successful and he's with this very beautiful blonde mm -hmm. and Miss Money Penny calls him and says, you know what, that's the end and they pull the curtains yeah, I remember that. and it ends and the yeah. boat was designed in that sort of mood. Okay. So it's very, very romantic. I think Great. it's been, it's given us a lot of spark. You can live your dreams by private hard work. I think if you're a good professional, 
in anything you are, you are, you're in, get to the top of that profession. In other words, whatever talent God has given you, be the best at it. If you're the best at your own talent, you are bound to be at the top of that occupation and then you're bound to earn a lot of money. So mm. for me, law practice has been my base. I'm an advocate. I represent individuals or corporations. I plead their causes and I plead it very forcefully and successfully most of the time. And as a consequence of that, they pay me. Yeah. And uh, having paid me, I decide I must enjoy my life with it. I've fallen in love with the water. I've just, it's just amazing. Um, and I can honestly say that personally, since meeting you and talking to you, very inspiring man. So thank you so much for taking oh, time a, out to it's a pleasure. let us into your life. I'm, I'm so happy to have had the opportunity of um, this enjoyable period with everyone. Thank you very, thank you very much. much. Hi, I'm Onos, and if you did enjoy that video, which I know you did, you better subscribe to our channel and you can watch more videos too.